What is going on, Jeff fans? Matt O'Leary back with another video. In today's video, we have some breaking news. The New York Jets are releasing Lakin Tomlinson, who was their starting left guard for the past two seasons. This move will save the New York Jets $8.1 million against the cap. Now, this is a move that I was calling for. I thought it would be wise for the New York Jets to move on from Lake and Tomlinson. One, because for the amount of money that it would save. And two, because unfortunately, he really didn't perform that well. But let's talk about how we got here to this point. So really interesting with what the Jets decided to do after the 2021 season. They go out and they sign Lake and Tomlinson to big money, big money free agent at guard. Uh, and he starts, and to his credit, got to give Lakin Tomlinson a ton of credit on this one. He is a beacon of health. He plays consistently on the left-hand side at guard. He doesn't miss a lot of time, which is fan which that part of it is very good. Unfortunately, he was very underwhelming as a New York Jet, and he most of the time played at a below-average level player when he was being paid like an elite-level guard and the funny thing was coming off his last season in San Francisco he played guard at an elite level and maybe some of that was because he's playing next to Trent Williams but moral of the story things did not work out the same way with the New York Jets this past year again pretty rough for our guy Lincoln Tomlinson he allowed seven sacks and 51 pressures allowed holy smokes 51 pressures seven sacks just an absolute abomination uh, I believe it was like three penalties, something like that as well, which not a very high number of penalties, which you'll take. But again, just a, a swing and a miss free agent from Joe Douglas, which unfortunately outside of DJ Reed, there's not a ton of great free agent signings. Now, I was excited at the time for the Jets adding a guard. I thought it was something that they needed to do. And they moved AVT from the left side to the right side of the offensive line. But now the Jets are going to have a very different, like this confirms the Jets will be looking for at least three new starters on the offensive line. Again, a wise decision. AVT and Joe Tipman are going to be the only returning starting offensive linemen. And technically, Joe Tipman didn't even start to start the season last year, but you plug him in as a starter. You have to decide what you do with AVT. So my first thing that we want to get into now is potential replacements for Lakin Tomlinson because it's one thing to say, okay, the Jets should rep should replace Lakin Tomlinson, which I agree with, but then what is your plan after that? So number one, you could move AVT back to the left side. They said that they kind of want to find a permanent position for Elijah Vera Tucker, and through his first three years in the league, has been anything but that. He played left guard his rookie year, played right guard, left tackle, right tackle, his uh, sophomore season, his second year, and then this past year played right guard and right tackle before getting hurt. So decide, where do you want to play AVT? Is it guard or is it tackle? And if it's guard, is it on the left side or is it on the right side? If it's on the left side, then there is your Lincoln Tomlinson replacement. You could also go to free agency, which is something I would advocate for the Jets doing. I think, in my opinion, this is a pretty good free agent class on the interior. I've made it pretty known throughout this process. I don't really love a ton of the tackle prospects uh, at in free agency, that is. But I do like some free agent options at the guard spot for the New York Jets. So here's some names. We'll start on the higher end of the spectrum, depending on how much you want to spend. Robert Hunt, Kevin Zeitler are guys who are going to be pretty costly, but would be really nice additions to this offensive line. Then you kind of get like the mid-tier guys, Dalton Reisner, Ezra Cleveland, John Runyon, a former Green Bay Packer, so maybe there's a connection there. And Graham Glasgow is a name that I've mentioned a lot on this channel. He's a little bit of an older veteran, but I like Glasgow. I think he's someone who would be an immediate upgrade and not very costly. You get him on a two-year relatively cheap deal to play guard. But another name that you can maybe toss in the mix here is Mike Onwenu, Uh, and that's because he does have that tackle and guard flexibility, which is intriguing about him. You could either play him at tackle or you could play him at guard. Maybe the Jets prefer him at guard and they're going to plug him in whatever side of the line is TBD. And then finally, there is the NFL draft and the Jets have a first round pick. Clearly, they don't have a second round pick, which is very well known as it was moved in the Aaron Rodgers trade, but they are picking 72nd overall, which is in the third round. And to me, I think that's a sweet spot to draft a guard. 
And there's some names in the third, fourth, and maybe into fifth round who I think are players who can give you starting experience right away. And I'll give you some names, for instance. more The first four are more third round guys. The last guy could, if he was healthy, could have, could have gone in the third round or higher, but uh, he might end up falling. And that's Christian Mahogany, I think, out of BC would be a good fit. Christian Haynes, uh, I also think would be a really good fit. Cooper Beebe is a name that's going to be very popular. And Zach Zinter out of Michigan. Granted, Zach Zinter was hurt, so his draft stock is now looking like a fourth or fifth rounder instead of what was probably looking like a lock to go in the third round, maybe, maybe even go higher if he didn't get injured at the end of the year at Michigan. But I would really keep a close eye on these guard prospects because I know tackle and we, we talked at length about the offensive tackles who could be there for the Jets in the first round. Guard is not a position I see them going in round one, but I do think that you could do some damage in the mid round. So maybe it's a mix of signing one of the free agents that I just listed off and also drafting a guard in the third round and AVT's out there playing tackle. Or maybe not. Maybe AVT is going to play guard for you. And then you have your uh, mid-round guard that you're developing behind the veteran that you bring in for a two-year stopgap. We'll see, but moral of the story, I wouldn't lose too much sleep over this one, Jet fans, if you're concerned about how are the Jets going to now fill three offensive line holes. Well, unfortunately, if the Jets were going to keep Lincoln Tomlinson, he was probably going to be one of their weaker links on the offensive line. I know that's harsh. feel bad saying it. Hopefully he bounces back somewhere else, but it didn't work well for the Jets his past two years. Uh, he's been very healthy, but other than that, hasn't been great. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Are you happy with the move number one? And then how do the Jets pivot and fill that hole? Let me know your thoughts. I'm Matt. I'll catch you next time.